Nobody thought much of it when Jesse entered the vet's office with a giant box. The little girl was probably just bringing her pet to a regular checkup. Jesse walked up to the assistant. She told her that she did not make an appointment, but it was really urgent. When she opened the box, the assistant turned pale. She screamed to the vet and told Jesse not to touch it. What on earth did Jesse bring to the vet? Before we start, can we get this video to 1,000 likes? Please hit the like button and subscribe to the champ. After all, she had saved it. The vet said that she could not go to it. It was too dangerous. When Jesse tried to get to the door, the vet blocked her path. He urged her to sit down. The police would arrive soon to see what they could do about the situation. The police? Jesse shouted. She felt like she was being treated like a criminal. Suddenly, she heard sirens outside. The vet had locked the room with a creature in it. Not only did police officers rush into the vet's office, but their environmental experts were also called in as well. They immediately started asking all kinds of questions to Jessie. However, the girl was just 12 years old. They could not keep her. She demanded that her parents be called because she felt overwhelmed by the situation. Jessie's parents came in after about 15 minutes. Jessie refused to talk to the officers about what had happened. In the meantime, people in hazmat suits started to walk in and out of the room with the creature in it. When they Jessie's parents saw that Jessie wasn't allowed to leave the vet's office, they got mad at the officers. How could they keep a child against her will? Then they started explaining what had happened, and both of them were shocked. They quickly urged Jessie to tell them the whole story. She had to give them a lead on where she got the creature from. This could be a life-threatening situation. Jessie herself had to be checked as well. They were informed that a doctor was coming in. Jessie said that she has been an animal lover for as long as she can remember. Today wouldn't be the first time she was on a rescue mission for an animal in need. She loved nature and would often walk through the woods and like so many other times, today was a day she'd be a helper to an animal in need. But things aren't what they seem. Jessie thought he'd seen it all. After all, she'd rescued dozens of animals from birds to rodents, lost dogs and cats, and something resembling a wild boar. She didn't like to be called a hero, but deep down it felt good to help these animals. After all, they were so cute and lovable. How could she refuse to help an animal in need? Her parents confirmed to the police that she had indeed rescued multiple animals in the past and that she was a young volunteer for the local animal shelter. But today there was something else that she found in the forest while on one of Jesse's walks through the woods outside of the city. She was sure he heard an animal crying for help. She paused in the woods waiting to hear it again. It was only a few seconds until she heard the cry again. It was faint, but it was definitely a sound she had never heard before in her life. Jessie was determined to find the lost creature. Listening to the cries and taking careful soft steps, she made his way through the forest. She thought she lost the animal at one point when the crying stopped. Frightened she'd gone too far, Jessie took a few steps back until she once again heard the soft crying. Even with her extensive knowledge of animals, this creature was new to her. Jessie spent a few minutes looking over the giant creature, trying to see if it had any wounds of any kind. The creature seemed fine except for being alone and probably scared. But what could it be? The more she looked at it, Jessie wasn't sure. And that wasn't the only odd thing here. The little moss bed that held this giant creature was strange and looked odd to Jessie. This wasn't something very likely to be found in nature. Perhaps some animal had built it as a sort of nest. If it hadn't been an animal and it wasn't natural, that left one possibility. Humans. The big question was why would someone come out to the middle of the woods and leave a creature like this alone? She knew one thing had to be done. Making a makeshift carrier for the giant animal out of the cover of her travel bag, she carefully put the creature inside it. She felt a little sting in her hand. The creature had wounded her. She only now showed her hand to the police and doctor. The spot on her hand had completely turned purple. She was definitely either bit or stung by the animal. Jessie did not want to tell anyone. She did not want anyone to worry about her, but she immediately had to get checked out. The one was quickly found thanks to tracking down her number plate. She also had a purple rash on her body. This definitely meant that whoever the creature infected Jessie and the woman with was airborne. At that moment, the vet started to cough as well. There was something strange going on. 
The creature probably made the vet sick as well. They had to quickly get to the place where the creature was found. This would get some answers. A team was dispatched to the forest. In the meantime, the vet, the woman, and Jesse were taken to the hospital to get treated. They needed to get blood samples before they could determine what they had to do about it. Jesse had already fainted in the ambulance. This was getting more serious. Her parents weren't allowed to accompany her because there was a risk it would spread. They were being put in a containment unit for observation. The search team quickly got to the forest location, and what they saw there horrified them. The place where Jesse had found the creature was completely dead. Every tree and plant around was completely gone. This was a catastrophe. They had to be extra careful so that they would not hurt themselves. A sample had to be collected so it could be taken to the lab for further testing. One brave officer took it upon himself to get the sample and drive it to the lab all by himself. He had to act quickly. He heard that Jesse's condition had gotten worse. The officer got a quick escort to the lab from multiple vehicles. He was taken inside by a couple of doctors in protective suits. He himself was placed in containment, and they quickly got to work on the sample. But they had to deal with a giant creature as well, who was still locked in the vet's spare room. All everyone could do now was to pray and hope that the researchers quickly came up with an answer. There was no other option than to burn the creature. They could not guarantee that the creature could be safely transported, so they did not want to take a chance. They had already collected a sample, so they did not need the creature anymore. The researchers could determine that the creature did not come from this side of the world. It probably got transported by plane from another country. They sent out the files to multiple countries to see if they could get some more information. After waiting for a while, they got called by another country's health department. They had recognized the creature. They had recently had an outbreak in their country as well. They told the researchers that they first had to burn everything that got into contact with the creature. A team was dispatched to the forest again to locally burn everything down. They burned the clothes as well as the people who got in contact with the creature as well. They got more information afterwards. They have found a dangerous insect. A couple of research departments started to work together to help Jesse and the rest. The news picked it up as well to spread awareness of what was going on. Within an hour, they could a whole lot of concerned calls from other people suffering from the same symptoms. This was getting way bigger than anyone ever expected, and multiple hospitals were quickly turned into emergency shelters. They had to get a cure and fast. This could not stay long this way. That would be dangerous for the public safety. The creature was burned inside of the room that it was locked into. There they found out that the creature had laid eggs. This explained why multiple people were now experiencing similar symptoms. They had to track down where the eggs went. A national hotline was opened for anyone to call in with tips. They got a whole lot of them. People even went outside in groups to search for these insects. They found a couple of them in the city center and on the forest edge. Eventually, it seemed like everything was contained. Now they had to turn to the cure. The other country that helped them had already sent a plane with medication to slow down the process, but they had not found a cure yet. By a stroke of luck, it looked like the parents of Jesse were immune. They took blood samples from them and reproduced the antibodies. This was injected into Jesse's arm. After waiting for a couple of hours, Jesse woke up. She was healthy again. She had asked what was going on and where the creature was. The doctors told her the whole story. Jesse was completely stunned. She felt horrible that she had made this happen. Then the doctors calmed her down. Jesse had in fact saved the entire county. She had contained the creature before it could spread. Eventually, the police figured out that someone had planted the creature there to teach the government a lesson. The person was part of a larger group, and all of the members were arrested for endangering the public safety. Jesse was called to the president's office when she fully recovered. She still did not believe this was her doing. The president told Jesse he was proud of a girl like her and that more people should take inspiration from her. She was honored by the president and even got a medal. She grew up to be a strong environmental activist and run her own shelter. She went down in the history books 